Okay. I can't figure out what's going on here, but I'll walk you through it. I've got my construction script, and that's for my static mesh component, which is a 100 by 100 by 5 floor. And the inherent material of that static mesh is my clear material. So I changed it so that it just is that material when you place it in the world. You don't have to set a material to it. Just kind of like the way your block was. So, you know, the block that you used in, you, in, in uh, I can't remember the name of your game, it's uh, Procedure Test Production Test Test to Production Proto Protoduct. Okay, so Protoduct. In Protoduct, you had a uh, cube that you put into your world, and it has a material that it starts with. So right here on Source Material, you don't have to set a material. That's how yours was working. I remember that. So here's my static mesh component, and I just pulled that from right up here. I didn't make it into a variable down here, but when you click on it, it is a variable, you just can't change the name yet. So it's like one of these uh, show inherited variables. It's probably an inherited variable. I bet it's in here, maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. But, it, you know, I didn't make it into a variable. So I grab this, bring it down here, and then I right click on it to create the uh, dynamic material instance. And then I connect up the execution wire and uh, it's element index 0 which takes the first index thing the guy said so that's takes the nose it's talking about the something and so then this connects to here I, I right clicked on this return value and said promote to variable and named it dynamic material so I just started over you know like just to see if I can make this thing fucking work the, like you did and go to the event graph and I do event actor begin cursor over first time I did it I right clicked up here and added the event add on begin cursor over and tried using that but it had the extra node here for the touched component and it didn't go anywhere and you told me this is the one that worked this event actor begin cursor over so and it wouldn't work with this thing so I got rid of that so then I got this event actor begin cursor over and I connected well, first I, I, you know, I brought this event in. Then I brought in the dynamic material. Then I right-clicked here, and I set the vector parameter value node, and that connected these automatically. Then I was able to connect this. Remember, we couldn't get it to connect before. It doesn't unless you do it by right-clicking on the dynamic material. That was the problem we were having yesterday. But anyways, I connected it. No errors. I put in the parameter name, which is clear, and I can show you that real quick if we go to my clear material you can see right in here the material is called clear well the uh, not the per the material but the parameter I actually named clear and when it's a parameter and not a texture sample you can just name it really easy so that's the problem we were having yesterday as well so I got I set this to the proper thing my material is now the proper type of material where it has a parameter as its value for the base color and um, so that's all good. It's called clear, and we can remember that, like the guy said. Now I'm remembering. I, I'm, rem I'm rem memorizing it right now. And um, so then when we go back in to the grid over here, we know that the parameter name we're using is proper. It's clear. And the value, I decided to just change to some random color. I don't even give a shit. It's just super blue. Whatever. Okay. And so that's all good. It's all good. Compile it all. Runs through. The chords run through like fun. Save. And then we go.
I'll show you what I've done. I really worked on it a bunch today. I moved everything back to the construction script. And so here just as a run through, in the construction script it sets clear as a variable. And, and it sets it to that material. And and I probably don't have to do any of this anymore because I already changed my 100 by 100 tile to have a material on it already. But it sets that and then it goes into the loop. And the loop, you know, we know how that works with the x and y height. Does this cool percentage equation? You can look it up. You know the equation. And then it, um, the percentage equation is not percentage it's remainder. It's mod modulo, modulo. But yeah, it does the remainders, I guess. It does division with remainders, I think, is the way that works. And this is normal division. So it like, takes a loop and it says, how much? X. And then it says, okay, we'll then take the remainder and do that as many times as the Y says, or something like that. You know how it works. And it takes my X width, which is right here. It's just an open variable that you can change. And my Y hit width my y height which is the open variable you can change and it uses my y height another time down here and then my small tile size is right here um, because it's the smallest of the tile sizes if we ever expand to bigger tiles and um, that's about all the variables I'm using right here and I can go over to the other Now we can really kind of see what these are. So we got 10 times 10 is 100 minus 1 is 99. So the last index is 99, first index is 0. That's 100 spots. So the loop makes sure that it puts a 100 things out. And then we tell it kind of what we want the. Oh, stop it. Then we tell it what the index with the index somehow, somehow, <laughs> crazy ass shit, the y height, the index, so each time, this is how it works, so like zero comes through, and it goes zero, and I can make my lines a little clearer if I scoot it all this over, I'm gonna eventually scoot it over, you know, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna scoot this back, just for now, so it takes zero, and it puts it here and then divides that by y height and y height we know is 10 so this is 0 divided by 10 which is 0 and then it puts that 0 off into a multiply so it multiplies 0 by 100 and it gets 0 <laughs> this is kind of a foolish one to show you on um, you know, and so then that has zero, and that comes through right here, and it says x is at zero. It's pretty dumb, and it does the other, the same thing on the other one too. Just it goes through the whole operations with the modulo and stuff. It says zero divided by ten with remainder, and it's zero times one hundred, and that's zero, and so it gives a y of zero. But the next time it goes through and checks the index. It says 1, so it's 1 divided by 10, and you get 0 0.1. Well, I don't know, that's weird. Oh, that's why it has to convert it into a float? I don't know actually what it gets on this. Uh, we'd have to have it print each time and see what it's really getting on these things. But, I don't know, 0 0.1 times 100. Okay, so yeah, it gets 10 here, and it puts 10 right there. And... Y did it with one. So if it was one for this one, it would be one divided by ten with the remainder. I don't even know. It's just I don't know actually how that works, but probably like ten or something. So don't worry too much about that because you know more about it than I do. And if you don't, we can look this up together at some point. But 
you know, you could write one of these really easy. So I know you can understand this if you, at least as well as I do. Um, <laughs> God. Well, anyways, that all happens, but it goes through 99 times, it goes through 100 times, because it goes through the zero time, and it sends all that information to this make vector. And so each time it tells the vector the x and y. And we return that value over here. And what it does is this thing just changes the integer into a float. Um, and so the, then it takes all the vectors that it's got, and it says, hey, this is cool. And we change that into a relative transform. And since there's 100 relative transforms, and since this thing happens to be a node for adding a static mesh component that is the static mesh component that I made, it puts it in a hundred spots based on all these cool things that we have and it puts the center of the deal I think the center of the uh, the static mesh in that spot um, and we don't uh, refer to a Z uh, float so it doesn't really care we could we could actually that's actually kind of fun is you can type one in here or you can just make a visible Z float number and we can have this thing be up higher than or lower or wherever we want. So I could just add a variable, a quick variable. Um, I think I can even promote to variable this way. Yeah, I can promote to variable the other way. It'll make a Z for me and then it'll have it here. No, that would set it though. I don't know, maybe not. Regardless, it would be very easy to make a, var a variable right here. You just add in another integer variable, press Z, uh, Z, just Z whatever you wanted to call it. Um, I call these width and height. I guess it could have been width and depth, and then I could use z height. Um, and then you could just plug it in here and make it a visible variable, and then change the height of the damn thing whenever you wanted to, which is fun because it's not included in any of the math. So it would just move it up and down, as you said, as whatever you typed. And so that's all cool and everything, and that sets my static mesh component, and it knows the relative transform, um, and the target is itself, so it knows what static mesh it's trying to be. You know, you could have it target something else if you want a different static mesh. Um, maybe even a boolean, so sometimes it's a different static mesh, sometimes it's a circle, sometimes it's a square. That's cool for later on. I don't know, maybe, maybe not. Um, so then over here, I promoted this return value, which is a static mesh component, to a, a variable called tile. And tile, let's go over here. Why can't I see tile? That's a little weird. Static mesh? Where is it? Huh. That is so weird I mess up a connection in the deal navigate to what the hell is going on here let's do it again promote to variable okay so that made a new variable oh wow it just wasn't showing it in some components I don't know something's weird Okay, so now it's showing it. I don't know why I messed up before it wasn't showing it. Uh, let's get rid of the new variable. Okay, so here's my tile variable that I made real quick just to see. Is it? This one's capitalized. Yeah, no, that's the right one. Okay. So here's my tile variable I made, and I don't know why I made that. Why did I make that? Oh, yeah, for over here. Okay, perfect. So. Um, the return value I just promoted to a tile variable, and then it also the target also goes to the set material because it needs to know to set the material. It probably doesn't anymore because now I already have my um, static mesh floor set up exactly how I want. So just to update my work right on the video, I'm gonna just delete that. And like I said, we don't really need to set this clear variable anymore. So let's go back and fix that. Um, right here, just skip that set. Oh god, this mouse is being funny. Okay, bring my mouse thing over here. 
All right, so that for loop is connected now without setting that variable first right here because we just don't really care. Oh, I have to get rid of this first, I imagine. And let's just compile and save to delete. This program is so dumb about deleting. Delete that. Let's delete my gray highlight as well. All right, those are two that I made from before that I don't really need. And this tile place apparently I don't need anymore either. Okay, compile, save. All right, so now here's what I think I've figured out. So wow, I just promote that at the very end. We don't have to set a material because it's the right material. Um, <laughs> I haven't looked at this in this. That just sets. You know, I set that as my. A uh, new variable that I wanted for call to refer to the tile if I need to. So then over here, I think what I figured out for execution is instead of executing it through the end of the add static mesh component. Oh, and I need to set that right there. I do believe. Yep. Okay. Um, I now am thinking that after the for loop is completed, there's an execution wire to happen, and I think that's when I would want to create the dynamic material instance. And the target would be my tile because I want to use that clear material that's on it and change that into something else that, you know, um, and it's the inherent material, so we're not setting any non dynamic materials here. And uh, so I don't have to set the source material. Um, I don't have to select the asset, it's still the element zero. And then I set the gray highlight dynamic. I have this gray highlight dynamic. Um, that's what I've called the material instance dynamic that we're setting here and because I promoted it right from here it made it into material instance dynamic um, so we move off into the event graph which is now very very simple on begin cursor over tile place the uh, touched component oops come on. Um, is right here and it's the same thing as before where I use this one because I just promoted it from my um, from my variable here um, in the other one because I'm just not bringing the static mesh in in the construction grip uh, script the one I showed you before in my grid um, I was able to pull it from the static mesh component up here when I wanted to make the wrong kind which we haven't I, you know, I showed you it and deleted it before but um, you know, the one with the extra pin for the touched component. So in this one, I just made it from the variable that I created before. Um, but I, you know, like I said, we don't need that. So we go actor begin and actor begin overlap. Oh, that's not the right one. B. Cursor over. All right. So there. We go. Delete that. Put this right here. Kaboom, baby. The parameter name is on clear. And again, the material hasn't even had any material set to it now, so we don't have to deal with that. It's just this create dynamic material instance, and when that happens. Um, and since we don't want that to be part of the loop, we want it to be after, I think it really does come out of the completed part. Um, maybe not, maybe it needs to be in the other side, but that's what, you know, I'm making this video just to show you what I'm doing and see if you can help me figure this out. So, <laughs> man, I've been working on this for hours now, and I, I did well by redoing all this and moving it over the construction script. I thought I had it figured out. So anyways, I put my gray highlight dynamic stuff that I made in here, put it in the target, and this time again, just picked a crazy value up here that has an alpha, so it's not going to be invisible, and it's ready to go. And compile, save the son of a bitch. Um, yeah, save clear my material, and it's gonna fix it all and apply it and do a nice job here. Just takes a second. There it goes. And this one's a little darker because I do have both of my meshes in here. I can turn off my other grid since we're testing on the map grid at this point. So I will press play. 
and nothing. Just nothing. Except for sad tones. So, I just, at this point, I'm a loser at this game. I lost. I, I've lost so many lives on this game today. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna have to use a bunch of continues and all this stuff. Oh my god, my score is gonna be terrible. But it's good information. I think I'm. Uh, this is good to catch you up on exactly what I'm doing. Um, that's I, the one that really baffles me is my first grid. My, here because like I said you know I showed it to you it is just the way I thought yours was the only thing here is that I'm using my own material um, and I can actually show you that I and you can go into the uh, square model that you have and you can go look it up in this um, editor this is like the editor for the, I don't know what it's called, but it's the editors for the static meshes or whatever. And so it tells you the dimensions. It's 100 by 100 by 10. And um, the build scale is 0.1. It's because I took it from something bigger. I made it smaller, so I don't know. This is how I got it all to build, but it doesn't matter. But here is the material that I gave it. And when you set it like this, you know, I have it all set.